So NVIDIA is getting closer to world domination every single day. They just had their GTC conference and well, it might just reveal some things about future graphics cards and I'm not sure if you're gonna like it. Boys, we gotta talk. So first off, I wanna say this conference was pretty much all about AI and I think that says enough about NVIDIA at the moment. They're pretty much totally focused on AI, the rat race and basically getting everyone invested in NVIDIA. Jensen seemed a little bit off put when he saw the deal with OpenAI yeah. and AMD. Yeah, I, I saw the deal. Um, it's it's uh, imaginative. It's it's uh, unique and surprising. Uh, considering considering they were so excited about their next generation product, I'm, I'm surprised that they would give away 10% of the company before they even built it. And so um, anyhow, it's, it's uh, clever. I guess. One thing that I saw that I was actually kind of amazed at is NVIDIA quoting a $0.5 trillion um, expected, well, I guess you would say gross revenue. This is how much business is on the books. AI demand of next year. In 2026, they're expecting to sell a half a trillion dollars worth of GPUs and products. And that is just insane, boys. I. I their GPUs are gonna cost so much at this point. Um, but the thing I really wanted to get into is the teraflop numbers of next-gen GPUs. What are they doing with AI, things like that. NVIDIA's making all kinds of plays. They're investing the money they're getting in R&D and all kinds of things. I actually saw them pointing towards quantum computing where they NVIDIA believes in accelerated computing more than anyone. And there are certain things quantum computers can do even better than GPUs, a lot better actually. And basically they're offloading those tasks i think right now it's just error correction they're offloading to uh, quantum computing or maybe the gpus are doing the error correction for the quantum computing not too sure quantum computing is really difficult to understand so i'm not too sure but nvidia announced at this gtc conference they're actually uh hooking up some quantum computers in some special cases to their uh next generation rubin architecture and it's going to speed up ai like crazy basically and do error correction and things like that so i i'm i mean are we here are we at the quantum computing level now i guess so this is the first time i think it's ever been used in some sort of data center for actual um you know compute like in a scenario where it's going to make a difference. I, quantum computing's here, I guess. NVIDIA was the first to get there. If that doesn't deserve a $5 trillion stock evaluation, I don't know what does. I actually want to talk about the performance of Rubin CPX. Now, NVIDIA leaked this a while back ago. They're basically saying this thing's going to be 30 teraflops. No, not teraflops. I meant to say petaflops. <laughs> yeah, 30 petaflops in fp4 compute for reference the 5090 is about 3.35 petaflops so this rubin cpx is about nine times as fast when it comes to fp4 uh, performance i have a sneaking suspicion this is based on some new, new tensor core architecture that's highly optimized for ai workloads and basically this is what i want to talk about today rubin is next generation rtx 6000 so I mean, I've already estimated the 6090 is going to be around 35% faster in gaming than the 5090, but that's in pure raster. I also want to talk about AI performance because, well, you know, AI upscaling, DLSS, frame gen, all those things are really starting to matter, especially if you have like a really good OLED monitor. And guys, I think that we're going to see another 2X in AI performance. Um, for reference, you know, the chips that are equivalent to Rubin CPX, I'm not sure if there is a complete equivalent because it seems like Rubin CPX is actually using GDDR7, which actually um, no, no Blackwell server chips use that. They all use HBM as far as I know. But Rubin CPX is going to be using 128 gigabytes of GDDR7. Meanwhile, B100, um, it had 14 petaflops of AI compute FP4. So that is actually less than half than Rubin CPX was. And so Rubin CPX is actually 214% faster than B100. Now, Nvidia did come out with a B200 and that chip actually had 18 petaflops. So that is just the limits of Blackwell architecture B200. As far as I know, I'm no server expert guys, but that would make Rubin CPX around 167% 
faster. And I have a feeling that Rubin CPX isn't the limit uh, of the Rubin architecture. It's probably a B100 equivalent. So just call it 2X in AI performance, anywhere from you know 66% to 2X performance is what we're gonna get with the Rubin architecture when it comes to FP4 compute, and that's basically gonna be used in AI workloads. When it comes to gaming, we're more looking at FP32. So yeah, guys, I, I <laughs> all I can think when I, when I see a doubling in AI performance is MFG 8X. You know, eight, eight fake frames for every, or no, I guess seven fake frames for every one real frame. But then also you have upscaling with that. So it's really gonna be, you know, at the moment, I think we render one real pixel for every uh, 15 fake pixels or AI upscaled and generated pixels. So at that point, it would be double that. I think it would be one real pixel for every 63 fake pixels believe if I'm wrong, maybe it's either every one pixel for every 31 fake pixels or one pixel that's real for every 63. Let me know it in the comments below, but if we had 8X frame gen with ultra performance DLSS, yeah, it would basically be that <laughs> like you, you would be rendering vastly more frames and pixels with AI than you would be actually natively. So at that point, I think we are in the software meta. We're in the software and AI meta when it comes to hardware, where you're no longer paying for um, pure hardware, you're going to pay for the features. And we've been getting to this point ever since 3000 series, I feel like where you've been paying for the features over maybe VRAM and to be honest with you guys, it's actually worked out. AMD just announced that RDNA 2 driver support is ending. Now they've kind of stepped back on this and said, well, you know, selectively we may update games here and there because there was a lot of backlash when it comes to it. But it doesn't matter if you went with more VRAM with RDNA 2 on something like, you know, a 6800 XT compared to a 3080. To be honest with you guys, the 3080 has aged better as long as you don't use over 10 gigs of VRAM because the DLSS, the ray tracing performance, the memory bandwidth, all those kind of things has really helped out the 3080 and its driver support is probably gonna be here for another four years or so. So at that point, yeah, like these things matter. Like the software support, the AI upscaling, it's leading to longer longevity in cards. And at this point where we're reaching a limit with Moore's law, or at least price scaling, um, when it comes to what Nvidia is willing to sell us hardware wise for the price, you know, these AI features are really going to matter. And if they can still get a two X performance increase in AI gen over gen, well, they're going to use it. Okay. So what I'm thinking this next generation is going to be, you know, same die size, the same die size, 35% more raster across the board, something, you know, I've went back and uh, detailed all the performance estimates. You can go watch that video. Basically, you're going to be seeing around 35% more performance across the cards in raster. But when it comes to AI performance, we could see a doubling um, when it comes to like frame gen and things like that, DLSS efficiency, maybe you could see another 20% gain in FPS when using DLSS quality, things like that. I expect, I expect Nvidia to add all kinds of a compression techniques uh, when it comes to VRAM compression, memory bandwidth, compression efficiency, because we already hear AMD talking about those things. There's no way <laughs> Nvidia is going to let AMD come out with the arc, um, some sort of, uh, feature before them. So you can bet Nvidia will be including that. It may be exclusive to 6,000 series and all those features in uh, AI madness is basically going to add up to a card that has less hardware, but is actually faster than something that we have now. And that makes me a little scared for my 5090. I mean, it is a beast when it comes to hardware. It has all the features now, but if Nvidia decides to lock it out of the features, yeah, it's not gonna age as well, especially when it's pulling 500 watts to get the same performance as a card that really might just pull 200 watts a few years from now. So that's where I think Nvidia is going. When it comes to AI performance, the 6090, if it doubles the 5090, we'd be looking at around 6.6 .6 petaflops of AI performance. And that's like a little mini supercomputer in your house. I'm not gonna lie, guys. That in, that's in the petaflop level. Um, yeah, I mean, the B100, which is a supercomputer chip, is at 14 petaflops, and who knows how much that was, probably like 20 grand. So if you're going to get a 6090 and it's going to have 6.6, .6, that's pretty darn good for a fraction of the pot price. Now, it is a couple years later, but still. 
So it seems that AI performance is still increasing very rapidly while raster performance is not. Now, when it comes to other accelerated computing like ray tracing, it's up in the air whether this AI performance gain is actually gonna really increase ray tracing. We know that um, ray tracing is very, very com computational heavy. So increasing AI performance actually also increases ray tracing in a, in, in a way because you actually don't have to render those rays once you've done them once, you can just interpolate them or upscale them, right? So yeah, um, when it comes to next generation, Nvidia is cooking, they're adding, you know, quantum computing to their, to their um, AI stack in data center. And it looks like we're just gonna get a trickle down effect where it's just gonna be huge gains in AI performance, minimal gains in raster performance. And I, I think I'm okay with that. A lot of people in the comment section are saying that raster performance is as good as it needs to get. I'm not sure if I totally agree, but I think we definitely need to focus on ray tracing. It's not there yet. Path tracing still brings, you know, even the 5090 sometimes to its knees, especially if you don't use, you know, upscaling and frame gen. But yeah, um, Nvidia's next gen strategy is basically to, not design anything for gamers particularly. Basically, just cut down the scraps and give it to us. And that might sound like similar what they've been doing, but I think it's gonna be even more so next gen, guys. I really just think it's gonna be AI gains and that's basically it. That's that's just is what it is. The 5090s, <laughs> you could have double the AI performance, stable diffusion, uh, Olama, all those things are gonna be really great. When it comes to gaming though, we might just get more frame gen madness and who knows, maybe, you know, reflex will come out, reflex warp and change the scene. But at this point, I think if you get yourself a high end graphics card with at least 16 gigs of VRAM, you'll be good for another four or five years. And then at that point, we can kind of see what kind of gains we made in ray tracing and things like that. Nvidia actually showed a uh, picture of Intel 18A when it came to one of their nodes on their presentations. I don't know if they just stole that picture and they're still going to use TMSMC everywhere or if they're actually thinking about using Intel for something, but that would be kind of crazy. Who knows? The ultimate team up would be AMD, Intel and Nvidia all teaming up for the sake of money. But <laughs> now they did detail Feynman, but who knows what all that's going to entail? Basically, probably just more uh, AI performance. Maybe they'll go down to FP2 compute uh, to try to double um, compute in that area once again, but that's going to be built on two nanometer, maybe even 1.4 nanometer from TSMC. I've been hearing rumors that Nvidia has been bidding for that. So at that point, it's going to be the generation to hold out for. I think if you really want to hold out, um, if you have a 40 or 50 series card or even a high end 30 series card, if you really just want to get a huge gain, you might want to wait for Feynman because it's going to be on a huge node jump to where we are now. Whereas, you know, Ruben, it's gonna be a lot denser. Clock speeds probably won't increase as much and then power efficiency, I'm not too sure. Next generation's looking like an AI boom and a gaming bust. But let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Silicon steak. steak, the master of tech. Ever review every spec, he's on deck. From GPUs to CPUs, he knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fan can cry, but they can't deny Silicon Stakes truth cuts through the lie